Hi there, and welcome to the fifth in our series of short revision videos updating students on key recent developments in the UK economy in 2019 as we head towards the summer exams. In this video, we bring students up to speed with the latest data concerning the UK's external trade and current account with the rest of the world. Trade, of course, is important for the UK. The UK is an open economy. Around a quarter of national output is exported, a little bit more is imported. The share of trade as a share of GDP is, is almost two thirds of the value of national output. Of course, the UK is also open to foreign investment and other forms of capital flow. So let's look at the big numbers and the big picture. Uh, the first of all, the external external trade balance. And the story here is that Britain continues to run a sizable trade deficit overall in goods and services. In 2018, we sold exports of goods and services worth £635 billion. Pounds. Uh, our imports were valued at £664 billion. So the net trade balance was £29 billion, a trade deficit, imports greater than exports. In the exam, of course, it's important to talk about the value of exports, not just exports of goods and services. The value of exports is the quantity effectively multiplied by the price, the total value of trade. Uh, detail, the, the trade deficit of goods was £138 billion. You can see the chart here expresses a share of GDP and it was rising. The surplus on services was 108 billion, which was a record, but of course not enough to offset the trade deficit in goods. The current account, of course, uh, also includes investment income, uh, net primary income as it's called, and transfers, net secondary income, including current contributions to the European Union and military and overseas aid. Well, the current account, which includes those balances, uh, saw a deficit of uh, 68 billion in 2017 compared with 103 billion in 2016. The, in 2016, we had a record current account deficit of over 5% of GDP. You can see that uh, in the chart here. Our uh, trade service balance was positive, but all of the other three aspects of the current account the uh, net balance of trading goods, net primary income, and the net secondary income, they were all in deficit. And that meant that we had a significant current account deficit of 5.2% of GDP. Now that has come down. It was 3.3% of GDP in 2018. So the UK's trade position, external position is improving, but we still have a, a significant deficit on the current account. What does that mean? It means that the UK needs to finance that by attracting inflows of capital on the financial account. Um, be it foreign direct investment or perhaps some hot money into the banking system or other portfolio flows perhaps into the UK equity markets or the housing sector. So the need to finance that deficit makes the UK quite vulnerable to shifts in investor sentiment for UK assets, be they equities, bonds or housing. At the moment, the UK is and remains a favoured venue for inflows of foreign capital. So financing the current account deficit is not is not problematic. But of course, Brexit uncertainty may well be a factor in the months and years to come, particularly if there's a big fall in sterling. And also if more multinational companies such as Honda, perhaps Nissan and others decide to curtail their, their planned capital investment spending in Britain. Perhaps the UK won't be able to rely on those big inflows of, of, of FTI going forward. Crucially, I think, to the external account is this question of competitiveness. How competitive is the UK economy? Well, overall, the UK was ranked eighth in the 2018 Global Competitiveness Rankings. That's published by the World Economic Forum. Uh, that makes the UK the fourth most competitive country in the European Union, behind Germany, well, behind Europe, behind Germany, Switzerland and Holland. Uh, so the UK does pretty well. However, if you want to go into the detail, uh, we're ranked 47th uh, on internal labour mobility. That suggests there is quite a, a problem of geographical immobility, for example, as well as occupational. We're not ranked particularly highly for the quality of vocational education, uh, 28th. 32nd only for digital skills. Quite a few other countries are ahead of the UK in terms of things like software and coding. 
and we also have a very low ranking in terms of our pupil to teacher ratio in primary education. So the UK does have some supply side weaknesses that certainly need to be addressed. One of those is the productivity gap. If you look at this chart that shows an index of hourly labour productivity for the G7 nations, which includes the UK. I've made the UK stand out in green there. You can see there was a fall in, in productivity in 2007, 2008. And since then, our productivity growth has actually been fairly weak. It's fairly flat from the chart there. Other countries have seen productivity rise more quickly. And that's extended the productivity gap between the UK and some of our major competitor countries. And another aspect of supply side weakness is that as a country, we're probably not investing enough in research and development. This chart shows that uh, UK, UK R&D as a share of GDP has been stubbornly below 1.5% of GDP, which is the government's current target. It has risen in recent years, so that's some good signs there. But R&D spending remains a, a weakness on the supply side. There we go. There's an update on the UK's trade and competitiveness data.